So we've been looking at the anatomic landmarks in the mandible, and you can see in the basal seat area, the most important one is the retromolar pad, there, right there, and the mesitic notch area. Then you, of course, have the ridge, the ridge per se, all the way to the other side, as well as the retromolar pad on the other side. The limiting structures, if I were to remove this, the limiting structures, you can see this is the vestibule, the buccal vestibule. This is a small buccal frenum. Here, of course, you have a small labial frenum. And then it goes on to the other side similarly with a small buccal frenum and a labial frenum. On the lingual end, I'd like to retract this and just show you the retromylohad region, so you can see that. Right there, retromylohad is in this region, under the tongue here, where you want to capture the impression so that it gives you adequate retention and stability. Okay. The floor of the mouth, in his case, as you can see, as you can see, that when the tongue is, is relaxed, the floor is in this location, as the tongue goes up, the floor slightly raises, but you still have three to four millimeter height at the premolar region between the floor of the mouth and the crest of the ridge. In the anterior region, a little less, but still there is the height. So this kind of a floor would be called a floor with minimal mobility. But this should be sufficient for us. Okay?